Hi, and welcome to the Sprint 4 demonstration for the Hydra in a Box repository development. We are going to talk about some of the things we've been working on in this latest sprint this week. And I'm just going to go ahead and get started. So one of the biggest changes we've been um, we've been exploring is making the Hydra in a Box repository application more multi-tenant so that one instance of Hydra in a Box can host multiple applications or multiple different accounts. As we've been working on that, we've had to make certain parts of the stack that weren't already multi-tenant uh, multi-tenant. And one of, the, one of the things we've been doing is working on making solar, the search index for Hydra in a Box uh, multi-tenant. So that is now enabled and the Hydra in a Box repository app is now configured to use solar cloud, which is uh, the solar um, multi-tenant option, uh, uses it by default. In addition, we've also created a new, you might call it a superintendent admin role. So for every instance um, of Hydra in a Box, there will be multiple tenants, and each tenant will have its own administrators. But there's also a, an administrator that spans all those different tenants. So that role is now available. We've also done some work on the underlying relational database for the app. And the default database is now Postgres as opposed to SQLite. And that's so that we could play nice with the component that we're using to provide multi-tenancy, and it's called Apartment. Other than that, this sprint has been really focused on taking a lot of old code, dead code, out of the application, uh, out of the application that we're based on called Sophia and doing refactoring work and updating to make sure that we're pointing at all the latest and greatest components and that we don't have a lot of technical debt accumulating so we can't maintain the application easily. So, so I wanted to highlight some of that work. Uh, one piece of work is uh, they're in curation concerns, which is another component that we depend upon. There's a new actor stack, which is a way to chain a bunch of different steps. And when an upload is being processed in Hydra in a box, there's a bunch of steps that need to fire off in a certain order. And now we have this actor stack and curation concerns to um, so that we can do that in a way that's overridable. There is a wiki page on the Curation Concerns uh, GitHub repository that you can look into. Uh, you can look at if you're interested in that design. We've also changed Curation Concerns to make it easier to override what defines an administrator account in Hydra in a Box. We're using the latest version of Solar, Solar 6. We're using the latest versions of Curation Concerns and Sufia. And we've also been doing some user interface work here uh, that's related to refactoring uh, in that we replaced what used to be a collection, uh, excuse me, a custom collection icon with an icon font from a widely used um, component called Font Awesome. In addition to that work, we've made some key changes to the Sufia README. Some of the links were not formatting properly, and we've been hearing that it's difficult to get up and running as a developer of Sufia. So we gonna, we've gone ahead and talked with the community and updated the test suite section of the documentation for Sufia and regenerated the table of contents. Uh, so that's the refactoring and documentation work that we've been doing. Now I want to show you some changes to Sufia, particularly to the upload form. So first, I'm going to show you uh, the new work upload, uh, which you've seen before in a past demo. We've also made a change to the batch upload. I'm not going to run through batch upload right now because you saw that last week. Uh, we're now, for every item you upload in a batch, you can set its resource type individually rather than in bulk. So if you're uploading three files and one is a map and one is a book and one is a manuscript, you can label those individually rather than having to go back later and add those. So upload form. So you'll see this is Sophia right here, the latest commit. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new work And I'll pop in a title. 
And there's a couple changes to show right here. So you'll notice in the save work widget on the right hand side of the screen, there's now an on behalf of box. This is so that you can make deposits on behalf of other users. This was available in Sophia 6 and now it's also available in Sophia 7. So I could select someone at example.org here. Uh, I'm not going to for now, just because um, it's easier to do this demo when I don't do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some files. One thing that you won't see here is um, you will not see some validation that we added that actually gives you control over how many files can be part of a new work what the max size is per file and what the max size is for all the files that you upload. So I'm not gonna upload 101 files right now to show you that, but that is working, verified to be working. You'll notice too, a change that we made is we simplified the, the upload interface. There used to be three or four buttons up here at the top of the screen. Now you'll notice at the beginning, there was just one button called add files. And as soon as I added files, they just automatically were uploaded. I didn't need to say start uploading. And then once they were uploaded, the cancel upload button is lit up as are the per file uh, cancel buttons that we can use. I'm gonna show you, this is if I had created collections, there's a way to assert that this new work is part of a collection that now works. And we also have a sharing interface now. This will look familiar to those of you who've used CPS6. I'm gonna go ahead and grant someone at example.org sample, um, grant them edit access. All right, and then the last change I'll show, I haven't configured this component yet, but this, if I had configured it, would allow me to upload files from Dropbox, Box.com, SkyDrive, or OneDrive, whatever it's called now, and Google Drive. So right now, it just by default, it lets you like pick files off your file system. Not terribly useful, but I did want to show that browse everything. That's the component that provides this, that that component is now working and integrated. I just need to provide a Dropbox uh, key to get this working, uh, get this integrated with Dropbox. So there's that. I've entered my required metadata. I've added my files. So I'm going to go ahead and make this deposit. This is going to take a little bit of time, but the last thing I want to show is the new work page. So we had a, a, a very good large ticket from the Sophia user interface working group with a new wireframe for what the, the work show page should look like. What we've done is we've broken that ticket up into about 10 to 15 other tickets, more granular changes. And in the meantime, we took the current show page and just broke it into a bunch of different parts and shuffled them back in an order that that more closely matched the wireframe. So next week and the week after, we'll be continuing to make these changes to implement these, these last couple wireframes that the UI working group has provided for us. So stay tuned, I should see that in a second. While that upload is processing, I'm gonna show you some other changes. So this is the Hydra in a Box demo app, and I'm gonna show you some changes we made to the settings user interface. I'm gonna to go to admin. You'll now notice that in addition to settings, there are user roles. I'll just show you user roles for now. This is where you can see all the users in the system and assign them different roles. I'm already an admin, so there's not much to show there right now. Now I'm gonna go into the settings, and I need to update this because this is the uh, Sprint 4 demo, I'll just say it's Sprint 5 demo, uh, or rather because it is the Sprint 4 demo, I'll add an exclamation point. I notice I have a typo here. Uh, and what these new fields are for, institution name and full institution name, are for some of the, the legal instruments that are included by default in Sophia, such as a deposit agreement and a terms of use. So here's the deposit agreement. You'll notice right here in the top line, it says foo and then Funkatronic Univity. Those are typos. I'm gonna go ahead and fix that here. Funkatronic University. And then you get to type out the full institution name. I'll go ahead and update that. And then when I click over to the agreement, you'll see that that text is now changed. So 
you'll see the Funkatronic University of the Cosmos, Funkatronic University here. And you'll also see the change of the title with my exclamation point. So just like last time, we're the same. All right, so we're back to the show page. And you'll notice that the layout is very different from last time. Now we have the title and the authors, if I had created them, would have been right between the title and the relationships. The metadata is now in a block over to the left of the thumbnail. So we've reoriented the page a bit, providing action buttons above the thumbnail and some citations and the ability to download beneath it. And then down below the metadata, you'll see all the different items listed. So this is a work in progress, but I did want to show you this because this sets us up for implementing in full the recommendations of the Sophia UI working group. That's it for today, and we'll have a lot to show you again next week. And thanks for tuning in.